Tonight in Rick's RSS, Facebook's, pop Facebook's popularity, how to go back to school, and a new gadget. So, Rick, how's it going tonight? Well, Brent, we've got a lot going on tonight. First, the face of Facebook is changing. It's getting older. But the senior citizens I talked to this week say they are up for the challenge to learn how to Facebook, tweet, and text. Uh, Tori LeBlanc realizes that most of the senior citizens taking her computer class have a lot of questions when it comes to understanding social media. Can it possibly be that my friend doesn't want me to Twitter her? I mean, what kind of questions do they ask? LeBlanc, a student at Holy Cross College, is summer interning at the Marilyn Michelson Senior Center in Bloomfield. Her goal is to help the seniors take some of the mystery out of Facebook and Twitter. I mean, I don't think everyone's going to leave here and make an account, but at least now when they hear about it, whether on TV or from family or friends, they'll kind of have an idea of what it is. But it looks like seniors are catching on to the social media bandwagon faster than anyone might have imagined. In just the first six months of this year, the use of Facebook among the gray-haired set has jumped from under 1 million users to nearly 6 million. Doris Ahearns is an 84-year-old great-grandmother. She's not new to the Internet, but she is just learning about online social networks. She likes using Facebook to stay connected with loved ones, but she's not looking to make a lot of new online social friends. I hope Facebook is just for the family. I don't want to get involved with, you know, a lot of people or anything like that. And uh, I do enjoy it very much. But mostly I do email and play games. <laughs> the demand here from seniors to learn new technology has been great. Soon they'll be learning how to send text messages. We're thinking of bringing in blackberries. We've had a couple donated, and we're going to let them practice with their thumbs. They're right there. But the seniors are trying to put all of this technology talk into proper perspective. I think as seniors you find out we have other things and other interests, so we're not on Twittering or texting or forever. We, we have a lot of things to do. And I recently got an email from someone who said she wanted to go back to school and earn a college degree. She's a working mom and needed to find a good online college program to start this fall. Well, I don't want to recommend a particular school or university, but here are a few websites that might help anyone looking for an online-only education. Educated.com is a very comprehensive website that rates, ranks, and compares online schools and degrees. There's even a section devoted to online schools or diploma mills you should stay away from. Another online resource you should check out is U.S. News & World Report's online education search. This site features targeted online programs in the fields of business, education, engineering, library science, and nursing. And from time to time, I get a chance to check out and review some of the latest gadgets on the market. Recently, the folks at AT&T introduced its mobile TV platform to the, new Har to the Hartford New Haven area. This week, I got to try out a new phone that also allows you to watch live television. The recent switch from analog system to a digital signal allowed AT&T to make the TV phone service available here in Connecticut. The company says that while a lot of phones allow you to watch recorded video clips on your phone, this is the first phone that allows you to watch live programming. It's important to note that the programming is all nat national in nature, so you can't watch Fox 61 yet, but you can tune in to Fox News, CNN, ESPN Mobile, and Comedy Central. If you like TV and you're used to watching shows or you maybe even miss some of your favorite shows at home, this gives you the perfect solution to be able to watch TV on the go. And the mobile phone is supported by four of its handsets, two by LG and two by Samsung. You'll have to pay an additional 15 to 30 bucks a month to watch TV 24-7 on your phone. And Brent, you've been playing with it for the last couple I have, hours. I got to watch a little bit of SpongeBob SquarePants back there and <laughs> a little bit of a Japanese uh, right. Mothra movie. From, but it's got the news channels yep. and uh, the 24-hour cable channels. And it, you know what? It's very clear. And even though it's a small screen, it's, it's, uh, it's really easy to watch. It's very bright. The old school antenna mm -hmm. action. Yes, <laughs> you're going to have to be careful about that. All right. Quite Neat little gadget, this. though, Rick. Thanks very much. Okay, if you have a sweet tooth, you're about to get that midnight craving a little early tonight. You see, tomorrow is National Ice Cream Day. Yeah, there is a day devoted to it. And